Okay, let's finally create our service for our application. I'm just gonna call the service app. And then we have a few options to do here. Now I'm gonna do image and let's remember what the image name is, docker image ls. And the image we created was shipping docker slash app. So that's the image we're gonna reuse here. So I want shipping docker slash app at latest, the latest tag. And we have some other configuration that's common to the other stuff here. We can do the network config. I'll just copy and paste that. And we are actually gonna do a volumes configuration here as well. It'll be a little different. We can use relative file paths from Docker Compose, which is nice, which is a little bit different from the dash V flag we were using before where it couldn't be relative. So I want to share in our application directory here that's relative to the Docker Compose file. And that needs to get shared to the var.dub.html location. So that is exactly like our Docker run commands for our application where we share the current directory and inside of that, the application directory to var www.html inside of the container. So we're redoing that exact setup here. So Docker Compose is gonna share our application code that's on our local machine into the container and put it at var www.html. The next thing we need to do is ports, and then we can do something like port 8080 in my Macintosh to port 80 into the container. In this case, I'm actually gonna do port 80. So this is gonna port forward port 80 on my local host and my local computer into port 80 inside of the container. And port 80 in, inside of the container is where Nginx is listening, so we know that that'll work. Okay, so we actually have a little bit more work here to do, right? Because shipping Docker app does actually exist in my computer, but if I deleted it and it did not in my local Docker here, what would happen? Well, this is not on Docker Hub, so it's not gonna know where to look and where to find the image I want it to start my app container from. So we need to tell it what to do here. And we can use the build command for that. So if you remember, when we did docker build, we defined a few things. One is the tag, one is the location of the docker file, and the second thing we did is the context, the directory to run the command from. So over here, we have one of the things, right? So the image item here is already saying the name of the image, right? So we already getting that dash T flag, right? Shipping docker app at latest. And then we need the context for the build and also the location of the Docker file. Okay, so the context is gonna be inside of the Docker directory and inside of the app directory within that. The Docker file is actually in the same location. So inside of the Docker directory, inside of the configuration for our app service, and then that's where we put that Docker file. Okay, great, and I think that is just about it. So let's see, Docker compose ps, all right, that's running from a previous video, so let's just do down here. And now we will do up dash D, and it's starting everything, our app container, cache, and DB. So docker, compose, ps, make sure it's all running. So everything is up, perfect. If I curl localhost, I hope we see some output here. That's not an error output, perfect. So let's head out over here. I'll go to localhost in the browser. Remember, we are port forwarding port 80, but of course I just don't need to define that because port 80 is default in web browsers, and we have our app. Great, now let's see, I'll register because I have new data, a new data container. And all right, we have an error. So network address, name or service unknown for my SQL. All right, so let's go ahead and edit application and the .m file within that. And we're gonna need to make a few changes here. So we have before seen when we spun up a container we did the docker run command and when we did that we gave it a name and the name of the container here became the host name now in our case here the service name becomes the host name so our service mysql is at host name db and our service named cache is at host name cache so let's go ahead and edit application.env and db host for mysql is going to be db and cache, uh, Redis host, is going to be cache. And while I'm here, I might as well just change a few things to Redis. We're gonna cache based on Redis. Session driver is gonna be Redis, and that's good enough for now. So save and quit that. And I'm gonna do a hard refresh here, so it'll redo that post request. And let's see, all right, so Predis client not found. This is specific to Laravel. I just need the Predis library to connect to Redis. So we can do Docker compose. And before we saw me do Docker run or Docker exec and all that good stuff, but we can actually do Docker compose. It's a little easier. I'm gonna do exec and I wanna execute against the app container, the currently running app container. And I'm gonna do composer install, actually it's composer require. 
Predis slash Predis. Now, I don't need to do anything else like set the working directory or anything like that because it should be all set already, I think. Actually, um, you know what? In our Docker compose file, we did not set a working directory here. So I will do that when I do the Docker exec flag here. So the working directory will be bar dub dub HTML and run that within the app container and run composer require Predis Predis. Okay, so let's see, work dart for exec is not supported in the API. This is specific to Docker Compose. Um, it is supported in the Docker command, the Docker exec command, but not the Docker Compose one, which is a little funky. It might be an API thing. I think it is supported in over 1.35 and I should have that, whatever. Docker has many mysteries like this. Within our service here, we actually can set a working directory, but I still think that wouldn't work with Docker exec. So one trick I like to do in this case and let's see, I'm actually going to do a new line. So Docker compose exec, and I get to do it against the app container. And I'm going to do shell dash C. So what this is going to do is take a string that I pass it and run it against in the shell, or I can even do bash, it doesn't matter. And this is going to run it inside of the container. I can do two commands this way. I can do CD var dub dub HTML. And if this is accomplished successfully, if we CD into that directory successfully, we can then run composer require Predis. Predis. Now, I can't just go ahead and do docker compose exec app uh, cd var dub dub html and composer require because what this is going to do is it's going to run this part inside of the container, right? So cd var dub dub html is going to happen inside of the container, but then it's going to finish that command and run this stuff on my Macintosh, so and composer require. So this will end up running the composer on my Mac, not inside of the container. So if I instead do docker compose exec and then do bash dash c, then I can do cd var dub dub html and then do composer require predis predis. Everything inside of the string is going to get run as one command inside of our application service. All right, Predis is now in place. Let's do a shift refresh to resend that post request. Okay, great. So I, I can log in here. Uh, I just need to run the exact same thing again. So let's see. In this case, we can do what? I think it's just PHP artisan migrate. All right, migrations are run and we know it can connect to the database because those ran successfully. Okay, perfect. I didn't have to go and hit the back button and refresh the page to refresh my uh, XCRF token or anything like that. Now I'm logged in and up and running in this application. So just to do a quick review, we defined our app service. We use this new keyword build to tell it where to build the current image if the image doesn't exist. So if it saw a shipping Docker app at the latest tag did not exist, it would build it using this context and using this Docker file. We connected to the networks again. We shared the local application directory here that has our application in it to var dub dub HTML inside of the container. And we port forwarded port 80 into our container here. So I can go to localhost on my Macintosh and that gets port forwarded to port 80 in the container. 